Greetings, this is Dr. Neumeyer. Again, I would like to um, credit Tony D'Onofrio, Dr. D'Onofrio, um, for uh, these uh, slides. Some of these are, are his, and some of these uh, slides re represent my work as well. Uh, in this uh, presentation, we'll be talking uh, about the MMPI-2 and the validity scales. Um, I would also say that I will not be spending um, a lot of time on this. Um, you have these slides in your um, in your blackboard and so I will be running through this. This is just a second pass to supplement and provide helpful information in addition to the pr previous lecture as well as the text and other resources you've been uh, using uh, so far in the summer session. So the MMPI-2 as you know has um, what we call validity scales which were designed to assess the client's test taking attitude and in this respect the MMPI became landmark and so um, moving beyond um, what we sometimes think of when it comes to the limitations of paper pencil self-report instruments, uh, the MMPI-2 was designed with items in mind that would uh, evaluate, that would take into account how individuals might um, be responding to the instrument in general. So um, are you perhaps uh, defensive or are you guarded? Um, are you um, are you trying to present in a certain way, um, either consciously or, or unconsciously? Um, so the validity scales provide us a clue um, that, that, the, that we can then use to understand the MMPI results. Um, I want to say that as we're talking about the validity scales, I will say this probably a couple times throughout this presentation, if when you are looking at an MMPI profile, um, the, your conclusion is that the validity scales are elevated in such a manner as to invalidate the profile, then you are done at that point. You cannot interpret the clinical scales. I can tell you I've been guilty of, 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 of wanting to go peek at the clinical scales anyway and to say something like this, well, let's still see if we can learn anything by looking at the clinical scales even though the validity scales are telling me this is an invalid profile. And you cannot. You should not do that. You should be, I caution you against that. When you are leaning in, in that direction, please seek out consultation um, from others who are, who are good at, at, at test work and test administration and interpretive reports um, so that you can avoid that pitfall. Um, it is tempting because your client has spent a lot of time taking that instrument. Maybe it's even cost um, them uh, some significant money and you are wanting that information too to help drive treatment and to provide insights into the client. So it's easy to try to want to blow past an invalid profile and still look at the clinical um, scales and make sense of how they are elevated or not elevated. You should not do that. You cannot interpret uh, a profile that is, that is invalidated by the validity scales. So I'm going, again, I'm not going to cover all these in depth, uh, but just to cover a few things here. So um, one, of the, um, one of the ways that an instrument can become invalid is in what we call the cannot say scale. So this would be uh, a significant number of items that the client was unable to indicate either a true or a false um, um, answer to. And so individuals will sometimes um, leave uh, some questions um, blank. Um, this can happen for a variety of reasons. Maybe their eyes just scan incorrectly and they skip an item and, and miss one. Sometimes clients will leave an item or two or a few items blank because they're, they're ambivalent about how to respond and they intend to come back to it and they forget to come back to it or they're still ambivalent and they just can't answer it so they skip it. Um, if you have an excess of 30, so 30 or more um, items that are skipped or not answered for whatever reason, this is an invalid um, MMPI at that point. Um, and actually, uh, uh, Dr. Graham, who I had the good fortune of having as an instructor at Kent State and one of the gurus in MMPI work for many, many years, several decades, he, he has a much more stringent cutoff. And so um, 10 or more, 10 items, he would say, can invalidate um, the profile so certainly if you see 10 to 29 items in that range, you should be very cautious. And I think that even if you get an interpretive report and you 
have 21, 22 items, and it still says it's valid, but with caution, I think there's still even a reason for you to wonder whether how valid the results are, and you may want to um, you know, consider it an invalid profile. Um, in our class, we are emphasizing the L and the F and the K uh, scales, the three big validity scales. Um, and so this detects rather unsophisticated attempts to present oneself in an overly favorable light. Again, unsophisticated attempts. So um, the individual isn't really good at like covering their tracks, as it were. Um, and so here's a few examples. I do not read every editorial in the newspaper every day. I get angry sometimes. Um, so like who would, who would put false to that, right? Uh, uh, and, uh, like most of us get angry sometimes, right? If I could get into a movie without pain and be sure that I uh, was not seen, I would probably do it. And so here are three items that would help us understand how a person may be uh, unsophisticated in trying to present in a particular way. Um, and each of these uh, validity scales, again, I won't go through each of these. I have um, some indication on the slides about if the score is high, if it is moderate, if it is low, and what it means. I, I encourage you to read through these slides as well as some of the resources and the, and the text. Um, so and again, just anybody who's responding with a T of, of 50 or lower, is, is typically respond on the LI scales typically responding in an open and cooperative manner, whereas 55 to 64 is um, is somewhat guarded. Uh, typically, I'll see in um, students within your class to be a slight elevation on on the LI scale, not overly elevated. One of the more uh, other items on scales is a little bit more elevated than the LI, but the LI can tend to be more in the 55 to 60 range for some of you. Um, the F, again, so the, um, this is looking for individuals who maybe are flagging or are responding to items in a more atypical or deviant pattern. So these are items that um, only 10% of the normal population would answer in this direction. And so if you find yourself answering, having a high F value, it, it's likelihood that, again, that puts you in a, a very small group and becomes a concern. Um, the F scale... Um, may represent um, things like uh, paranoid thinking or antisocial behavior or significant som somatic components. So could you have an, an elevated F if you have a client who has some real um, health problems? Sure. So um, all these validity scales get interpreted in um, light of a good client history. Again, it's just some... Um, some guidelines for high, mild, and low scores on the F. The K scale um, is a more sensitive uh, or, or than the L scale, so it's it, it's intended to try to catch people that are not being truthful um, and maybe trying to give socially desirable answers, and the questions are a little bit more subtle. Um, the, the most of you will have a an elevated K, uh, um, um, and um, we will use that then to correct some of your validity um, from some of your clinical scales. Again, these scales are all listed in your text. So there's there's the back uh, in frequency scale, the VRIN. And you can see that how this might how how this how this validity scale works. So we ask multiple questions that kind of are trying to that are in pairs. So there's 49 pairs that are trying to um, in each of these pair are trying to get at the same kind of construct. So item three, I wake up fresh and rested most mornings, and 39, my sleep is fitful and disturbed. So we're looking for inconsistencies across these 49 pairs to help us understand. Um, if, if you're responding in a, in a consistent manner on the brin. Another one for you. Okay. 
going to flip through these slides because I want to keep these somewhat short. Again, you're, you're more than welcome to read these slides. They're available in our course. The true response consistency is that the, the trend is looking for, again, here's one example of uh, one of the 20, 20 to 20, I think it's 20, uh, three items or 23 pairs. Oh, 20 items with 23, 20 item pairs with 23 um, item pairings. That's, that's how it is. So 99, question 99, someone has it in for me, or item uh, 314, I have no enemies who really wish to harm me. So you can see how it, in a long instrument like that, you if you could, if you were answering inconsistently, um, the instrument would be able to detect that and even know how to understand your clinical profile based upon your validity profile scale. So I want to get uh, a little bit ahead in the slides here and um, talk to you about um, what this looks like um, when we look at an actual profile. Before we do, let me just say again, what do you do if you have an in, uh, if you have validity scales that are invalidating the instrument? You do not look ahead to the clinical scales. You are, you are done at that point. Um, one quick rule of thumb, but it's not the end all in how to understand the, the validity scales is when you look at the L and the F and the K, if they are all below 65. They all have a T-score of 65, so they're standard deviation and a half, no higher than that on any of, of the three scales. If they're all below that, then um, some people will say you have a valid profile and you may move forward then to looking at the clinical scales and making, making an assessment and evaluation of the client based upon the clinical profile. Um, that's typically a good rule, um, but Again, you might want to look at that in light of some of the other validity scales and some of the other literature that you're being exposed to. So I'm going to move ahead on this one and just go to a. So this is the scale I really sheet I really want to spend a couple minutes on as we close out this uh, YouTube on um, validity. So I've plotted here for you um, a, a dotted lines and then a solid line. And you'll notice I've just plotted the L and the F and the K. And if we do the L and the F and the K from left to right, L first, F second, K third, and you may do this with your own to try to get a sense, get some plotting paper and do that to see how it looks. Um, the shape of the L and the F and the K from left to right um, is sometimes indicative of what's going on with the client. And you can make a quick interpretation of the, of the validity scales. So the malinger, the someone, someone who is perhaps trying to present in an, in an overly bad light, um, will have a very exaggerated um, um, mountain peak, if you will. Um, they will look um, off the map. And so look at this, the person that's truly does have some kind of psychotic condition. Um, they have a mountain peak. But it's it's uh, the L and the K are actually pretty close to to a normal level, uh, like a, a 50, uh, just a little above a 50. Whereas the F is about um, little about two two and a half standard deviations above the mean. So this would be somebody who we would say on the validity scale is demonstrating to us already some some indications um, that there's some some real psychosis going on, some real troubling. Thought behaviors, um, where thoughts and behaviors. Whereas the individual who has an overly high, like say 95 or 90 or, or 100 or even off the charts, this is somebody who's trying to present in a in a in a in a, in a poor light intentionally, but they're not very good at, at it, and the validity scales are picking that up. And of course, then that will distort the clinical scales too, and you can see that the clinical scales are again off the charts. When you see things that are off the charts, it's usually um, a pretty good indication that you need to go 
they're looking for um, some other underlying issue rather than they're truly um, at the clinical scale that are elevated that high. Um, I might go back here. I'm sorry, I'm, I can't remember my slides. Um, yes, let me see if I can go back to my slides. So just to return to um, this slide for a second, um, the other common shape that you will see on the L and the F and the K will be an in will be a V. So it'll be kind of not a mountain peak, but it'll be a, to invert this to turn it upside down, if you will. And I would encourage you to, or it might look like a check mark. And de again, depending on on whether it is an exaggerated or within the normal range can tell us a little bit about the client and how they took this instrument. So if I would see a very big check mark between the L and the F and the K, um, especially like a, like a slightly elevated L, um, an F close to the mean, say, and then a really high elevated K, this would be somebody who would really be trying to present in an overly uh, favorable light and would not want me to know what was going on. Or if it was a high L, a, a dipped F, and a, and a high K, again, this would be somebody that might be presenting in an over, over favorable light, very moralistic, trying to present as if nothing is wrong. I would not be surprised that if in um, your class, the majority of you had some kind of L and F and K, that looked almost inverted from um, from the um, from the psychotic individual here, or something that looked like a check mark. So you might just ask yourself that, and that's not uncommon. You guys are in a setting where um, most of you come from some kind of religious tradition where there's a moral um, moral underpinning and presenting in a moral or religious um, frame of reference prohibits you from indicating um, sometimes an openness to, to how you how you would feel about those items um, and then knowing that you're going to have people look at these scores could also color your perception and so we sometimes see some exaggerated L and F and K not in the, not in this direction usually maybe one or two of you will have some uh, L and F and K that look more like a, a carrot or a mountain but most of you will look more like a like a V or a check mark. Okay, so this ends my presentation on um, the validity scales and uh, hope this has been helpful.